after thinking about it, I said, you know what, I probably should not try to balance those jars and swing this this way. Thank you. How's everyone doing this morning? Amen. Amen. We're going to get right into it. Is that all right? We're going to get right into it. Is that all right? Let's do it. Dr. Masaru Emoto is known for a water experiment that he actually uh, was very famous for um, in regards to water. Say water. What he did was he grabbed water samples that were subjected to outside influences. These outside influences were words and sounds. Dr. Emoto was the first to record musical impressions on water. Interesting. What are musical impressions? What is sound? What does sound do, not just to us, but this man actually grabbed water and placed sound in front of it. Then he froze it at negative 70 and noticed something would happen to the water. The water was recording memory in regards to the sound waves and the energy that was coming out of whatever they were using to output that energy. Let me just show you a few pictures if I can. I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you see to the left, you'll see a water molecule before offering a prayer. To the right side, you'll see a water molecule after offering the prayer. There's a shape, a beautiful shape at that. At the bottom, you'll see the word thank you being outputted to the water. In the middle, you'll see words like you make me sick or even as negative as, I will kill you. And that's what the shape that the water formed. And to the right, you see the words love and appreciation. Now, he's also well known for something called the rice experiment, where he actually grabbed jars similar to this. He placed rice in it and also placed water, all the same amount. Now, one jar he grabbed and he placed and marked it, thank you love and gratitude. The other jar he grabbed and he marked, I hate you. The other jar was completely ignored. All right? And so what he did was for 30 days or plus, he actually spoke. Now, this might sound a bit weird, but just follow me. Right? It's not foreign. It's actually in the Bible. It's so interesting. He grabs and he says, thank you, and speaks words of affirmation to the one that he marked Thank you. And to the one that he marked hate, he spoke negativity to it. And to the one that he marked ignored, he said nothing at all to it. What do you think happened? Well, let me show you. I actually researched a bit, and I actually found a lot of people on YouTube who said, there's no way this can happen. There's no way that our words would have an effect on rice. Well, let me show you a quick clip, if you're able to see it, of a an individual who did this experiment. We can press play. I think we just need the sound unmuted. Thank you. All right, so the container marked with love is, it's in quite good shape. It's a little little yellow, but I'd probably eat it. All right, and the container marked hate is, it's in bad shape. All right, this is quite disgusting. There's no way I would even touch this. The container marked ignore is, it's in better shape than the container marked hate, but it's still quite disgusting. Let's move forward. Accept yourself and narrow down your odds. Try using 25 containers or even every time. Head back just a little bit if more. You, want, you might think that there's room for coincidence, but this works every time. If you want to try it yourself and narrow down All right, your we can odds, pause that. try using now, 25. Now, again, Dr. Masaru Emoto, look it up. Research it. I'm not just sharing this for you to just grab my word and run with it. Research. Look into it. He's also well known for finding out what were the two most purest words where water ended up reacting to them. And those two words were actually love and gratitude. Love and gratitude. Follow me, I'll I'll take you somewhere. I know this may be a bit different and a bit maybe scientific and so on. And I know we're not in school, 
but we are here to get equipped. Amen? Amen? Now, it's been said that we are to raise our words and not our voice, for it is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. Let me say that again. Raise your words, not your voice, for it is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. But what are words? Think about it. If you place your hand in front of you and you speak, you will feel something. You will feel your breath. You will feel energy. You will feel sound bouncing off of your hand. And in the last few years, and being involved with sound and, and, and behind the scenes of, of church operations, uh, you start to understand how sound bounces and how to control sound. And so, um, but when it comes down to it, it's energy coming out of us. There's vibrations that come out of us. Well, Dr. Emoto, this is nothing new, absolutely not. In Proverbs, we find out that it says that death and life are in the power of the... Yes. In Proverbs 6, 2, it says, You are taken as in a net by the words of your mouth. The saying of your lips have overcome you. Proverbs 13, 3 says, Watch your mouth and you'll protect your life. A careless talker destroys himself. But what does this have to do with Great Commission Sunday and with this mountain of the arts? Words, Dr. Emoto, the power and influence that words can have on a subject. Well, the Great Commission is instruction to us to go and make disciples of all nations. And that word nations, broken down to its Greek form, actually means ethnos which is where we get the word ethnicity. We are being told to go and make disciples of all ethnicities, all colors, all backgrounds, everyone. Well, let me be honest with you. Heaven is invading earth, and you and I get to be a part of it. And this mountain of the arts is playing a huge influence, a massive influence, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of our young people. It's all over the place. So I think it's key for us to look into this topic of sound, arts, music, sports, entertainment, and so on. Now, you might have heard uh, Pastor Joshua speak on these seven mountains. And as he mentioned, we spoke about politics, religion, and today we are in arts. Well. Yes, the mountains are religion, where you might have seen someone like Billy Graham, or religion, this is, this is it, this is religion, the mountain of that. Or family, where you see parenting and marriage being uh, affected, and heaven invading those areas. Or education, where you see Christian educators impacting the lives of people, of young people, our future leaders. The first uh, individual that came to mind was actually Pastor Steve. I know you were in the education realm, in the education mountain, and I have bumped into a lot of individuals who are now leaders in Ocean City who tell me, you know, Pastor Steve? Well, he used to be my counselor, right? Uh, and so I can see the impact that your life has had you being in that mountain. Another mountain is the mountain of government media, and again, arts and entertainment. Heaven is invading earth and we get to be a part of it. Say, I am a part of it. Absolutely. Today's focus is arts and entertainment. You see, in this mountain, we find some of the most influential forces shaping our society. We're talking about music, filmmaking, television, social media, and the performing arts that drive our culture. Values and standards of a nation's citizens, particularly its youth. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been shaped or influenced by what you hear? By what you've seen? It's happening right now as we speak. But again, what do my words have to do with all of this? Why such an emphasis on sound and words and water and Dr. Emoto? Well, let me ask you a question. What are we made of? Interesting. Now listen, I am not no doctor. I did not go to school for this. I am not a scientist, and I'm sure there are very well-educated more than I am in regards to those fields. But here's what I do know. I wonder if we could be affected in a negative or positive way when we also are confronted by these sounds and these influences that we bump into. If water ended up with that kind of shape, 
because of the words that were being outputted to it. What happens to us? What happens to our being? What happens to our inner man? What happens to our mind? What happens to our hearts? When we allow to be influenced by that realm. Let me give you the redemptive purpose of this mountain. You see, it is to reveal truth and beauty and to advance the kingdom of God through creative expression. You and I were created to create. Let me say that again. You and I were created to create. It's in our DNA. It's in our brain. Our brain is split up in two, a left side and a right side. What does the left side do? Anybody? Speech is more analytical, more logical. And what does the right side do? It's our creative side. Yes. You and I were created to create. The question is, what am I going to create? What has God blessed me with in regards to talents? Well, we'll be tackling that as we move forward. You and I were created to create. Heaven is invading earth, and we get to be a part of it. Here's what we need. You see, the body of Christ, we, we need powerful, righteous men and women who are not afraid to take their talents into these areas. People ready to further his purpose. This is key. His purpose. His. When we align to do his purpose, he blesses our ways. He does. There is a confidence and a purpose, a reward that you find inside when you're aligned with his purpose. And when you begin to use your talents for him, hallelujah, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing for his purposes, while impacting those who are lost in darkness and would not otherwise be interested in any kind of Christian message in traditional form. Let me say that one more time. While impacting those who are lost in darkness and would not otherwise be interested in any kind of Christian message in traditional form. Have you ever been there? Where you've bun bumped into individuals or cross paths with individuals who just do not want to hear it. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, are you saying that we need to change the message? No. No, we never change the message. But I am telling you that we are to begin to utilize these mountains for God's glory. We do what we've been called to do, and we allow our life to point others to him. And he wants to use your creativity to do so. He wants to use your creativity to do so. Let's look at some of these influences, one being music. And I'm going to share a few musicians who are very famous. And we know that our Christians, whether baby Christians or Christians who have been at it for years, one is Tori Kelly, extremely talented. And Vibe magazines and different people know that she is a committed Christian, powerful, the platform that she she has to spread God's love. Another one is Justin Bieber. Did you know that? Yeah. He's been caught leading little worship songs in the midst of masses. Wow. You know, these individuals, we need to keep in prayer. We do. These are fellow believers who are in that realm of massive influence. We need to keep them in prayer. Another one is Michelle Williams. How many remember Destiny's Child? A few? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Williams. Another one is Chance the Rapper. And watch this. Look how humble he was because he was being criticized uh, for possibly being caught smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. And, and, um, and he ended up taking a sabbatical to understand more of the Bible. He says, hey, you know what? I actually, I don't know everything on the Bible. But you know what? I'm going to take some time off and I'm going to go learn. You and I were created to create. It's in us. It's in our DNA. We've been set up to create. Another one is Lauren Daigle. Not too long ago, I had to go re-register my car or else I was going to get in trouble or a ticket. How many have been there? No? Is it just me? And, and I, I walk into the DMV. I sit down. I start filling, up, filling out the, the form. And then guess what's playing in the background? 
Lauren Daigle. What? There's probably 150 people jam-packed in there trying to get in and out. And in the midst of all that busyness, here is a worship song just playing. Here are co-workers sitting doing what they have to do for their pay or their career. And Lauren Daigle is singing over them. Wow. You see, we need to keep these individuals in prayer. Lauren Daigle has also come under massive attack because she wasn't able to answer a question that had to do with homosexuality. That doesn't write her completely off. She is still being of influence massively. We need to pray for these individuals. Another one is filmmaking, right? We have movies like War Room. We have movies like Rocky. Did you guys know that Sylvester Stallone came to Christ? Yeah. Look it up. Research. It's interesting to see, uh, you know, a, a famous individual speak about the grace of God, saying, yeah, yeah, you'll see it in the last movie. And this is how we did this and that. Fireproof. God's not dead. The passion of the Christ. Come on. The mountain of arts and entertainment. God is invading earth, and you and I get to be a part of it. Don't miss out. Now, you might be thinking and saying, well, I'm not a celebrity. You don't have to be. No, you don't have to be. We don't need to go chase those kind of platforms. We just need to do what we've been called to do. Right here with the platform God has provided. The platform of your work. The platform of your career. The platform of here, of the religion mountain. Come on. You and I have been created to create. It's interesting because I've actually met uh, the director of War Room. And even the lady, the, the lady that prayed, uh, the one where the movie was pretty much focused on, these individuals are amazing. And they never thought, they say it, I never thought I, I, this would have happened or I would have been here. Five, ten years ago, I never would have imagined God using me in this capacity. So let us not sell ourselves short. Because you never know what God has for you. What he has on the horizon Music, filmmaking, TV, social media, sports. We see uh, athletes representing and, and showing off unashamedly that they are Christians, that they believe in Christ. Tim Tebow, Manny Pacquiao. I get excited when he's going to fight. I'm like, yeah, I, he might lose on this one, but no, I'm with Manny. Right? Carson Wentz, Nick Foles. Stephen Curry, putting scripture on sneakers, do you understand the influence? Do you see what God is doing? I know things look dark. Yeah. The Bible said they would become dark. Days would become evil. What we see now is what the Bible has spoken about. But that doesn't mean that we stay stagnant. That doesn't mean that we stay still that we don't move forward with what God has called us to do. You and I have been created to create. Again, the redemptive purpose is to reveal truth and beauty and to advance the kingdom of God through creative expression. Say creative expression. But I'm, I just don't draw. No, it's not just about that. I'm not creative enough. Yes, you are. You just need to tap into your creative side. There are many, many forms of creativity. What I'm doing here is one of them. I absolutely enjoy and passionate about putting together presentations and sermons and having the opportunity to get in front of individuals and inspire them and point them to God. When it comes to writing music, that's also creative, yes or no? Yes. When it comes to drawing, that's creative, yes. Design, creative. Dancing, creative. There is so much out there on the creative side. The question is, where do you fit in? And let me ask you a question. Have you left something shelved? Meaning something that you used to do years and years ago? 
And you know that when you do that one thing, you feel alive. You feel like, hey, this is why I'm living. This is why I was created. But you have shelf somewhere and left it because of time or family changing and career. What is that one thing that God is saying, unshelf that, bring that back into the mix and let me use that creativity for my glory. Are you revealing truth and beauty? And in what ways can I take my revealing of truth and beauty to a new level? Come on, with social media nowadays, that is, that, that is a simple and awesome way to reveal truth and beauty. Let's reveal less hypocrisy, less judgmental post, less fighting, Let's reveal God's truth and beauty through social media, if you are in that realm. Are you advancing the kingdom of God? Come on, these are things that are tied into the Great Commission. These are things that should be burning within us. These are things that should be screaming on the inside of us in regards to, am I doing this? Or have I become stagnant? Have I allowed my creativity to get flooded by the negative influences? What are you doing with your creativity? What are you doing with your creative side? And would you be willing to walk out of this place today saying, you know what, I'm picking that back up. That book that I began to write and never finished, I'm going to go back and finish writing that book. That painting that I started years ago or the vision that God gave me years ago to accomplish something, I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I'm going to get back to what God has called me to do. Are you utilizing creative expression given to you by God? Listen, look around. Our God is creative. It's getting beautiful outside. If you look up, the sky is beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't know if you've had these moments, but at times I'm driving and sometimes I look at the sky a little bit too much. It's beautiful. It's as if someone just painted it at times. I've been in the mountains of Colombia where the clouds are right there and, and there's so much detail. It's beautiful. Our God is creative. Have you ever stood in front of a body of water that's moving? Whoa. It makes your chest a little, you know. Our God is creative. It's beautiful what he has made. Have you ever examined a rose? How beautiful it is. Creativity is all around us. It is everywhere. God has left his fingerprint behind. Genesis 1 the very first verse of scripture actually describes a creative act as God created the heavens and the earth. Space, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's all around us. And guess what? You are beautiful. You are. Psalm 139, pray, we praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. You're beautiful. I'm beautiful. You see, we need to speak to ourselves. We need to speak what God has already spoken about us. And believe it, no matter our scars, no matter our past, no matter what you've left behind, pick that creative thing back up and use it for his glory. And did you know that God is a compulsive creative? <laughs> Let me tell you why. He keeps showing different dimensions of himself which is why he wants you to be you and not somebody else. You see, I've learned much from these great men, but I don't want to be them because I've learned that I need to be me, right? God has created me a certain way. God has created you a certain way. Be you, like you, your unique, beautiful way. That's who we need to be. And when we align ourselves with that, Oh, the, do the creative juices flow. Oh, how beautiful it is when we align ourselves with who God has created us to be. You and I were created to create. We are all unique and different. 
We all have a creative side. Our brain is evidence of it. Be yourself. Because you know what? Everyone else is already taken. So there is no reason for trying to imitate or become someone else. Be you. Our prayer today should be, Father, I just want to be whom you have created me to be. And forgive me if I ever try to be like someone that you have not called me to be. Be you. You'll find much success when you stay put to that, when you stand firm on that, on being you. Long hair, tattoos, big beard, short hair, whatever it is, whoever you are, just be you. Get back to that place of confidence. Words are powerful. I'm actually going to try this. Now, am I going to get in trouble if I try this? No, right? Why do I want to try this? Because when you actually try something for yourself, something happens like, oh my Lord, my words are extremely powerful. Let's take it to a whole other level. Our thoughts are powerful. Yesterday, I was at a women's conference helping run it behind the scenes, and Dr. Jackson was talking about, forget the words that come out of you. It's the words that you let resonate in your brain and, and in your insides that actually end up molding you and hurting you in the long run. Words are powerful. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Have you embraced your mountain? Now, maybe arts and entertainment is not your mountain. That's okay. There's another mountain for you. Have you prayed about where you fit in, where God has called you? Have you stopped and asked God, hey, where do I fit? Where do you want me? Is it maybe where you are right now? Sometimes we're, we want to get out so bad out of our jobs or whatever we're doing. Thinking, if only I was doing that, I would be fulfilling my purpose. No, God wants to fulfill your purpose in you right where you are. Right where you are. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come on, pick that one thing back up. I may not know what that thing is, but you do. You started something at some point. A channel where you can use for his glory, and you've placed it down, or you placed it on the shelf. Have you embraced who you are? Pick that thing back up. Number one, reveal truth and beauty in all that you do. Number two, advance God's kingdom. Use your creative expression. He wants us to use our creative expression. He loves when we show off what he has placed in us. Not for our gain, but for us to point others to him. That's why we were created. Colossians 3.23, as I close, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord. Reveal truth and beauty in your poetry. Reveal truth and beauty in your art. Reveal truth and beauty with your music. Reveal truth and beauty with your sports, wherever God has called you. Reveal truth and beauty. Reveal truth and beauty in your video making, if that's what you're into, if that's what you've been called to do. Reveal truth and beauty in taking pictures, if that's what you've been called and love to do. Whatever that one thing is that just ignites you, go for it. What are you waiting for? Unshelf it. Bring it back into what you are doing on a daily basis. Reveal truth and beauty in writing that book. There is so much wisdom within our walls. Write the thing, finish the thing, and move on to the next creative thing that God has placed in your life. Reveal truth and beauty in your dance. Reveal truth and beauty in all that you do. Do it for him. Just as it says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart. I love the all of your heart. Because when you put your all in whatever you're doing, he blesses it. He does. When you go the extra mile, that's doing it with all of your heart. 
When you run the extra mile, that's doing it with all of your heart. When you stay up just a little longer to make sure that what you needed to finish is done correctly, that's going with all of your heart. Heaven is invading earth, and you and I get to be a part of it. What are you waiting for? Let's all stand to their feet as we pray and close out. Father God, I thank you that you have called us to create. And so right now, Lord, we just align ourselves with that truth and that calling for each and every one of us. Wherever our creativity may land, I pray that you would make it obvious and you would highlight it in our lives. I pray that you would give us focus and strength to invest the energy and the time that you have called us to do so. Father, we want to live for you and to point others to you. So help us, Lord, to pray for individuals who are in this mountaintop. Allow us to not be judgmental, not knowing the whole story. Allow us to pray for these fellow believers who are in areas of massive influence, Lord. Help them, guide them. May your Holy Spirit do what he does best. And so, Father, right now for us, we just repent of shelving the things that you have called us to creatively express here on earth. And we ask that you would help us to grab them off the shelf and do everything that we can with all of our hearts to bring them and point them back to you. Now, right now, if there's anyone in this room who feels like, yes, that's me, I've shelved a creative objective or a creative mission that I know brings me life, I, I left it to the side. If you could just raise your hand real quick. Yeah. yeah, you can put it back down. I see you. And so right now, Father, we just declare that we want to step back into that and that we are aligning ourselves right back to it. So show us, guide us, and direct us. Help us, Lord, as we try to find and grow in this creative side that you have called us to live out. Father, help us to be wise with our words. Help us to be wise with our words and our temperaments. Forgive us, Lord, for using words that, that, that only create a negative output. Father, forgive us for our language. Forgive us for the energy that we output at times, thinking that it's okay, but it's really not. For life and death are in the power of the tongue, Lord. So help us, guide us, direct us. And all the church said, amen. amen. The altar is open.